Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, June 17th. Our topic today is Open Mic, What's on Your Summer Bucket List? Your show hosts or the co-moderators are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. Our special guests are Paula Noggle and everybody in the room because Paula will facilitate today's show. And I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will now introduce Paula. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to all of you. We are so excited to have another open mic show where we get to hear from all of you, and we can learn and share together. So be brave, and even if you've never gotten on the mic before here, you're among friends, and I hope that you will raise your hand, turn on that mic, and share with us. This is always one of our favorite shows, and I especially want to give a big shout out to our entire Classroom 2.0 Live Advisory Team, who contribute faithfully all year long to help us find great presenters and topics, and also for their fantastic support in providing prizes for our brave participants who will be taking the mic to share with us today. So thank you to all of our team members. Paula Noggle, I'm sure all of you have met her somewhere along the way, either virtually or face-to-face. -face. She's one of the Classroom 2.0 Live hosts and a member of the advisory team. And she teaches fourth graders um, English language arts and social studies in a public school just outside of New Orleans, Louisiana. She has 40 years of classroom experience, and she is passionate about technology integration and connecting her students globally. She's an avid Twitter user, and I've included her Twitter ID in our live binder, and I hope that you will all follow her if you're not doing that already. She also moderates the fourth chat and the LA Ed chat for um, Louisiana, and she's an ambassador for Edmodo and Simple K-12, a DEN star and leadership council member, and she also serves as the Region 1 director for the Louisiana computer using educators. So I just wanted to make sure that you all recognize what an awesome person Paula is, and I am so happy to have her facilitating us today. So I'm going to turn it over to Paula, and let's get this show on the road. Well, thank you so much, Peggy. I'm sitting here. I think I'm blushing. Um, I love to say that, yeah, 40, I just finished my 42nd year, and I like to say I'm an old teacher, but I'm not an old school teacher. I love using technology and um, keeping up with the newest and greatest that's coming down the line and learning from all of you that are members of my PLN. And um, I have learned such a wealth of information from Classroom 2.0 Live. So I am so excited to be here. And I believe that our newbie question, yes, what is an open mic show and how does it work? Well, if you've done any Twitter chats, it's sort of like that. There's going to be a question po um, posted and then an answer. And you know, when you do it on Twitter, you um, type in your answer with, you know, it's question one, answer one, blah, 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 blah. Well, instead of doing it that way, I know some of you will be typing in the chat, but we are sure going to have a lot better fun and learn and um, have a better experience if you raise your hand. Um, after the question has been posted, and take the microphone. And as a special incentive for you to do that, we have great prizes we're going to be giving away today for all of you who do take the mic. So I'm hoping that all of you will do that. It is a fun experience. We want to hear everyone's voice because you will make this one of our best open mic sessions. So, are we ready to begin? I 
in self. Okay, so our first summer bucket list question is, what is the first PB book you plan on reading this summer and why? So, now it's your turn. Raise your hand by using the little hand thing right under your, uh, on the participants window. Just click on that and we will take you in order and don't forget to push the talk button when it's your turn. So, Sherry Edwards, you are up first. Take it away. Hello everyone. I'm in Cooley Dam, Washington and I'm, this is my first time, I think, um, at this format where we're sharing things and I want to thank Paula. We met as I just verified in 2009 right here at live class and I was just a beginner in technology and she was always there to help so yay Paula. Okay my PD book I have two of them. One I just discovered today it's by, let me see if I can find it, um, Jennifer Casa Todd, and it's called uh, Social Media, Moving Students from Digital Citizenship to Digital Leadership. And I like that one because um, I'm in a, following a hashtag, um, I'll put that in there too, and we're really talking about digital citizenship and about citizenship being some people have an aversion to citizenship because they're so, I think it's because they're so global and um, they think we should be vo volunteer volunteering in our participation and online that is what we do. On Twitter you d we decide which groups we're going to belong to um, and online we decide which Facebook groups are, if we're, you know, wherever we go online it's our choice. And then how do we establish the protocols for online discourse? Um, and all of this is, of course, arising because of the fake news and um, some of the meanness that's on the internet. And people want that. We want our openness back. So I've been following that hashtag, blogging about it, and then I just came across that book today about moving from digital citizenship to digital leadership. And I think that's going to help me think through some of the issues that I am uh, coming up with as far as helping make our world better. So that's the first one. And the second one is um, from it's uh, Bonnie Hamilton's Integrating Technology in the Classroom. And I'm actually doing it through a book club through Teachers First, which is probably closed by now, but I, I will put the link in the chat if I can get back to the chat um, there. Uh, and that one, you know, Bonnie spent years um, searching the web for classrooms who, that were integrating technology well, not just, you know, for something fun or extra, but where it was connected to their content and and interviewed the people and gathered it, it up. So um, that's what I'm doing. Somebody else needs to take over now. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry, for sharing. And we will now turn it over to Peggy George. Well, thank you. Thanks, Sherry. I'm so happy you kicked things off for us. Um, the book that I wanted to share today um, that I'm just starting to read is one by Rustin Hurley. And if you've ever met him, he's an amazing presenter and he has this incredible sense of humor. And his sense of humor truly comes through in his writing. So I know that you're going to enjoy reading reading this, and it's called um, Making Your School Something Special, and this is his latest book. He also has one called Making Your Classroom Something Special, and I read that and was so inspired. He has 
tons of practical ideas and really understands kids and relates to them. And I also, besides including the link to his book in the live binder, I also included a little short video clip where he is reading aloud chapter one from Making Your School Something Special. So you'll get a sense of what kind of content he has in that book, and I know you're going to love it. So I'll share that link in the chat. Perfect. Yes, Russian is an awesome guy, and if you don't follow him, you should do so. All right, Susie, you are up next. All right, so I'm going to share um, the book Start Right Now by a familiar trio. Um, Jeffrey Sewell, Todd Whitaker, and Jimmy Casas. And what I like about all of their books is they're very practical. They will give concrete examples. And um, I've been able to see all of them speak. And on Tuesday, I'm going to hear Jimmy speak at a conference here in Indiana. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm going to see Todd in September at our middle level conference. But I really do like their books because they're very practical. And I'll, I dropped a link for Start Right Now, and there have been some chats about it. And then also, I don't know if anybody was close to Indiana, but we have a fabulous lineup of workshops that are very inexpensive all summer. So I'm going to drop that link in here because there are just so many great workshops we can go to. Thank you, Susie. Are you going to the, is that the What Great Educators Do? No, um, the uh, one that I'm going to Tuesday is just a, one, of the, one of the 22 conferences in Indiana. And they're bringing Jimmy in on Tuesday and Kristen Zimke on Wednesday. And I get to see all that and eat lunch for two days for 40 bucks. Awesome. Well, we are going to talk a little bit more about conferences later. Oh, great. Wesley's back. I thought he'd left for a while. Wesley, it's your turn to take the mic. All right. Hello, everybody from South Central Kansas. Um, I'm going to be reading again Susan Bearden's book, Digital Citizenship, A Community Approach. We have finished a five-year strategic plan at our school for digital citizenship and are going to be spending this next year really building our team and we're planning to have a retreat in the fall with about 30 of our administrators and teachers and then in the spring host a ed camp focused on digital citizenship not only for our community but for um, the, the area and, and for parents as well. So uh, Susan Bearden is a fantastic educator and author on digital citizenship and we're really using her book as the centerpiece for our initiative, and I'm excited to, uh, you know, dive into it further and really get ideas about how we're going to be reaching all of our di different constituents at school, um, not only students uh, and teachers, but also parents as well. We have to press talk. Okay, Wesley. Thank you, um, Wes. I hope it sounded like you're driving. I hope you're okay. <laughs> um, I don't see any other hands raised for this question, but I would like to go ahead and share the one that um, I'm excited about um, digging into this summer. Uh, so first on my bucket list is um, the one by Joy Kerr called Shift This, and it is about um, her genius hour and how she started and um, all of the ways that you can get going. So I think that that's the one that I've been looking forward to um, really getting involved with. And I know that Joy has done such an awesome job with Genius Hour and her, I believe she's a seventh grade teacher. And so it's something that's near and dear to me and I'm hoping that I learn lots from her and can actually do my Genius Hour better this year. All right, so before we move on, is there anyone else who would like to take the mic and talk about something that they want to read this summer? And if not, we can move on. And if you think of something later and you want to share a little later about 
your favorite book for PD this summer, we can always come back to it. All right, so what is our second question? Okay, what conferences, live or virtual, would you like to attend or are you planning to attend this summer and why? Again, please raise your hand and we will turn it over to you. Awesome. All right, Maureen, you're up first. Okay, well, I'm not going to ISD, but I'm going to try to check in a little bit on not at ISD. But my favorite conference of the summer is Ed Camp, Connecticut. It's down at the Ethel Walker School, and it's always a lot of fun, great educators, and great food. Oh, and I learn things, too. So that's where my plan is. I love that, that you also learn things, too. Um, all right, uh, Wes, I, yes, you're back. OK, Wes, you're up. So, so I'm excited to get to go to ISD <coughs> again this year. And um, I'm really looking forward to um, attending a pre-conference workshop, um, a STEM-focused a STEM, um, one. Um, but I'm also going to get to return to Vermont at the beginning of August for Create, Make, and Learn. And this is an absolutely amazing STEM Institute um, that Lucy, who is Tech Savvy Girl on Twitter, hosts. And it, um, probably three years ago, my wife and our family got to go up there. And so it's in Burlington, Vermont. And it is uh, it, the last, I think, last day of July and first few days of August. But really looking forward to learning a lot about that. And then lastly, there's a very small conference in Kansas. It's in Marysville that's just outside uh, my parents' hometown where I grew up in Manhattan, and that is in July. And um, it is really a, a super low cost. I think it's like maybe 20 bucks for teachers to attend or something. Um, but it's all, all week long, and their district is iPad one-to-one. -one. And at the Google Summit that was in Mays, Kansas, outside Wichita, earlier this spring, I heard about it as just one of the most awesome, really teacher-intensive um, uh, workshop or conference and opportunities because it's almost almost all the presentations are by teachers talking about lessons and things that they're doing with technology in their classroom. So that's uh, some of the things I'm looking forward to this summer. That sounds like a wonderful opportunity, and I'm sure you're looking forward to it. All right, all right Peggy, talk to us. All right. I have two that I want to share. And just about everything I do is virtual. So the first one I want to share, if you haven't heard of it or haven't participated in it, is EdChange Global. And um, I'm actually going to see if I can do some screen sharing here um, and um, just give you a bit of a a visual of what this is like. EdChange Global is basically an EdCamp online, and it runs for 24 hours. It's one day, but it lists two dates because it depends on where you are in the world when you actually um, join in. But it's the end of July, July 28th and 29th. And they have tons of people who jump on and share in various sessions and challenges. And so it runs straight for 24 hours. Anyone can join in totally free. Um, just to give you another idea about the resources that are already on their site, they have a global blogathon, and everything that's on this site is already a posted blog post. So just scroll down that page. I'll put that link in the chat, and it's also in the live binder. And you will read some amazing blog posts from some terrific educators. So that's my first share. Um, and then my second share, <clears throat> excuse me, is um, our, I'm going to see if I can just uh, uh, bring it up from, um, <laughs> I've got too many tabs open, is um, not at ISTE. And that is my passion. And <clears throat> not only 
is it a great place to gather information and learn from other participants. I think there are like maybe 1,500 participants in Not at ISTE, and we have a Google Plus community. And um, the um, let's see if I can if I can bring this up for you. I think I can. Um, there are lots of challenges for people to participate in, so that it really involves you in the experience of ISTE, even though you're not there. We have our own um, Ignite sessions. Uh, we have lots of um, challenges for people to participate in. And I'm going to see if I can show you one of those. Um, in our live binder today, and this is what it looks like. And you can see there are tons of ways to participate. If you share, if you tweet, if you create a video, if you make a virtual badge, um, if you get a selfie taken with somebody at a, a presentation at SD, the list goes on and on. But that challenge will open on the Sunday uh, of ISD, or maybe Saturday of ISD. So I hope that everyone will think about going to that. But the next thing is we're, for the first time, having an unplugged conference there. And uh, this is going to be two days worth of online presentations, totally free, in Blackboard Collaborate. And there will be a schedule that you just click on the links to hop in this session. And there will be recordings. So it's another way for people who uh, maybe didn't get their presentation accepted at ISTE, so they can come and give it here to all of us, and we'll post the video in our live binder. Last year, the live binder had, gosh, easily a thousand resources, maybe more. And we're just starting to uh, accumulate resources now. So keep checking back to that live binder and you'll get lots of great blog posts and presentation links and resources from presenters both at ISTE and not at ISTE. Peggy, the not at ISTE group is so powerful and it offers so much for those people who cannot be um, physically at ISTE, they get a great experience. You all did such a wonderful job. All right, Susie, I'm it turning really you does. Thanks. over to you. Um, I'll just real quickly add, Peggy, Peggy's talking reminded me of this. There's also EdCamp Voice that used to be EdCamp Voxer, but they're thinking people might branch out to things like Flipgrid and other things. So on July 7th, Ed Camp Voice, another Sarah Thomas production will be going on. And I put the Twitter link in, and I'll put it in here. And you can start signing up now. Whoops. Whoops, sorry. Was off looking for a link. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. Um, anyone else? I don't see any other hands raised. All right, well. As you know, I am attending ISTE this summer. This will be my 10th one, I believe. Uh, I am not presenting this year, but I am going for um, all of the connections that I make and the learning that goes on and just the wonderful experience of being there with educators from all over the world. And then I'm super thrilled that I was selected to attend the DEN Summer Institute, the Discovery Educator Network. Den Summer Institute in San Diego in July. So I've um, been really looking forward to that. And I just finished a three-day conference in Baton Rouge that's put on by LeQ, one of our um, my state's um, organizing committee. So it's been a busy summer and going to get even busier. And I'm looking forward to that. All right, so before we go on, hold on, let me get to the right slide. Okay. We have a drawing coming up in a second, and there are some of you that have taken the mic and some of you that haven't. But if you would like a chance at the first raffle that's going to come up, I'm going to give you another couple of seconds here to raise your hand and either talk about a PD book you'd like to hear and read or a conference you'd like to attend. Yay, Shelly. All right, the mic is yours. 
Can you hear me? Hello? Yes, we can. Okay, great. I am very excited to be going to ISTE this year. The last time I went was in San Diego, and um, I can't wait to spend some time touring around San Antonio. Um, I am reading Disrupting Thinking um, with a book group here of other school librarians in Connecticut. And I'm looking forward to being able to do that discussion online. Thank you for sharing that with us. All right, anyone else? All right, so moving on to the next slide. We have our first raffle drawing for an Amazon gift card in the amount of $25. So, you are to raise your hand if you have already taken the mic to and shared so that you can win this prize. And everybody gets their hand up. Um, Peggy, I guess you have some kind of a, a picker that's going to work for us. So, if you've already taken the mic, please remember to raise your hand so that you will be included in our raffle. Well, she didn't raise your hand yet. Susie, come on. Or maybe Susie doesn't want to be in there. There we go. Yes, yes, no, maybe so. Sherry raised her hand. I'm sure he's gone. Okay. Is that it? Anyone else? Hi, right, Peggy. What happens now? Well, I will enter those. I'll put four numbers in the randomizer. And have it pick from one of the four and then tell you who it is. Number three, so it's Maureen. And Maureen wins this gift card. If you win a prize today, please don't raise your hand for subsequent raffles. And also remember to put your email in chat so that we can get the prize off to you. Uh, Peggy will take the emails out of chat before posting them on the website. So Maureen, you have the first one, and then also please don't raise your hand for subsequent raffles. All right, that's exciting. Congratulations, Maureen. All right, so if everyone would, um, if you want to put your hands down, we will continue with our next, but thank you. We will continue with our next bucket list question. What new tech toy or tool would you like to add to your tech bag this summer? This could be um, a device, or it could be an app, or it could be a site that you would like to um, start learning more about and checking out. Hey, Wiley, thanks for joining us. Okay, raise your hand, and we are going to start with Carolyn. Thank you. Oh, I forgot to press talk. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes, we okay, can. thanks. All right, long time no participate and I realize that there's been a big hole in my life and it's because I haven't been participating with you guys and I'm going to have to remedy that. Uh, I have um, one tech tool that I don't know much about and that is the virtual reality. I did go up to um, my middle, one of my old middle schools and one of the young men had his uh, Google glasses with his iPhone plugged into it and he let me take a look at Dubai or something like that and I had to sit down because it made me dizzy but I would love to learn a little bit more about virtual reality. And then I wanted to mention that I have had the, uh, I've been very fortunate to work with uh, three Korean boys there back in Korea now. Uh, but uh, we were doing vocabulary, and the boys actually introduced me to Kahoot, which is an online game where a teacher goes in and uh, sets up the Kahoot 
with uh, the definition or the word, and then gives four choices for each of the words. It's a little bit difficult to set up because you have to come up with vocabulary words for every one. But um, once you get it set, it's fun, and it and you can send a code out to the class, and so everybody. I mean, I I don't know if there's any limit, but. I usually played it with three with, with three of us, but you could have the whole class playing at the same time where they plug in a, a Kahoot code number that is given to them and everybody plays uh, pressing one of the four choices and then Kahoot keeps score. And because it is a very, um, it has a lot of competition in it, the boys just absolutely love this game. And then the other one was Tiny Cards by Duolingo. And you can do anything with it. You can do vocabulary, you can do social studies terms, math terms, whatever. But you plug in the words and the definitions, and then Duolingo makes flashcards, it makes games, it makes word searches, and it's just wonderful. So uh, I've been having a lot of fun with vocabulary, and that's what I've been working on. And thank you very much, and it's so good to hear all of your voices. I'm going to say goodbye. Carolyn, thank you for being here. You've been one of our supporters from the very beginning also. And yes, Kahoot is awesome. All right, Maureen, you're up. Well, one thing that I want to learn more about is Google Drawings. I know it's been out there for a long time, but it's really not used very much in my school, and I think it has a lot of possibilities. So I signed up to take Tony Vincent's class, which started at the end of the month, and I'm really looking forward to learning a lot more about how I can use Google Drawings and teach my teachers and students how to do that. And that's mine. Yes, I've signed up for that too. Tony is phenomenal, and I can't wait to see what he's going to help us learn. Uh, Google Drawing is uh, one of the underutilized tools in their suite, and I'm learning. Excited to learn more about it. All right, Lori, you're up next. Yes, I'm, I'm attempting to teach myself some computer programming over the summer. And I want to do some app sharing, but it's not the whole computer program. Let's see if this works. Okay. What I'm sharing is Jupyter Notebook. And it is online. And it actually connects to your hard drive. These are files that are on my hard drive. And if I click on this tab, this is code in Python. I just started trying to learn Python. And if I scroll down here, I've got some empty A's and B's. If I put a number in for A and B, and then run a little group of code, it will calculate the hypotenuse for me and print it out. I haven't done much with Python yet. I started an edX course, and it quickly got way overwhelming. Uh, but I think this can actually be used to help teach students programming because it will run a little bit at a time and you can also include written comments that aren't part of the code and it would be a very nice way to organize content for, for students. So that's, that's my share. I'll turn this off now. And actually, an easier way to get to Jupyter Notebook is through Anaconda. Uh, Anaconda has just buttons that you click to start Python and to start um, a place to enter code. And it, it runs more than just Python, I think. I know Jupyter runs more than Python. So I'm just starting with it, so it, I can't explain more than what I already have. 
Well, thank you, Lori, for sharing that. That looks pretty intense, and I'm sure you'll do an awesome job. That's definitely a, a nice thing to add to your summer bucket list. Okay, Barbara, you are up next. Okay. Um, I, I've been using the Google Suite, the Google Apps for Education in my school for a while, and I'm, I want to start using the Google Classroom to really expand it. Um, I'm currently teaching on nine different grade levels at two different schools, an elementary and a middle school. English has a second language. But um, I'm, I'm at, at the point now that I need to take the next step and really move to Google Classroom. And one of the teachers that just left my middle school said that she would help walk, walk me through it if I gave her a call. So I'm, and I'm excited to look to just begin that. Thank you, Barbara. I'm going to be doing the same thing since my district doesn't use it, but we, I think we might be going to it. But now that they've opened Google Classroom for um, individual accounts, I'm very excited to get going with that learning journey. All right, Doug, yay, you're up next. I don't know if I'm worth the applause, but I teach K-8 computers, and I also teach college students online. And one of the units in our K-8 group is uh, a little unit on digital music. And we use various programs online to create digital music. But it occurred to me after listening to some podcasts this summer that adding music to your presentations, your, your webinars, things like that can really enhance them and increase people's uh, engagement in them. So I found a program online. It's called Learning Music dot Ableton dot com. Ableton is one of the producers of some very sophisticated digital music software. And a couple of years ago I took a course at our local community college and I really enjoyed it, learning how to make music. I have absolutely no talent, but with digital music tools you can uh, pretty easily create things that, uh, that sound pretty good. So for instance, I don't know if you'll be able to hear this, this is the beginning of this digital, of this uh, learning music thing. It gives you a grid of drums, bass, chords, melodies, and you can start picking things and create some very attractive music like this. You can change things as you go. But more than that, it has actual lessons that follow that. Things on uh, chords, melodies, song structure. So for the little kids, it's fun to just make music. But for the older kids, um, it's, it's a, an actual learning experience. So what I want to do this summer is get back into digital music and add it to my college webinars, my lectures, and uh, prepare for the kids next year. Thank you, Doug, so much. It's so great to hear your voice. All right, and up next we have Sherry. Barbara, your mic's on. Okay, I just have a short one. Um, I want to learn more about the tool Hypothesis, which allows you to take any web page and then you can mark it up collaboratively with other people to discuss it. So I think it's a great tool for students and teachers. I've actually been involved in a couple already, but I would like to investigate it a little bit more. So it's a, a way to annotate and discuss content. Okay. Sounds like we've got a bunch of busy people. Barbara, do you want to share something else? Um,
All right. Well, uh, we're not hearing you. Um, Oops, I forgot to press the talk button. What I just I, shared it, I, I, I just shared it via the chat um, that as an ESL teacher, I've found that when you tie learning into music, that students can learn to read or retain information or learn faster when that learning is tied to music. So I find, you know, and, um, I, you know, want to hail what Doug has to have to say about incorporating music. Yes, it's another way to um, can make connections for our students, so that's awesome. All right, is there anyone else who would like to raise their hand and talk about a tech tool or a toy that they would like to um, experiment with over the summer? Not hearing you, Paula. Uh, are you having a bandwidth lag? Oops, there she goes. Yeah, Paula got dropped. That's what I thought. I saw those red boxes coming up. Lori, why don't you go ahead and do the next prize? OK. So we took the mic. All right, let's back up. Uh, those that contributed for the tech question, if, well, I don't see. Let's go one more. Keep going. There we go. There. Raffle Drawing okay. 2 is a book, autograph book, Connecting Your Students with the World by Billy Krakauer, Paula Noggle, and Jerry Blumengarten. And they shared about their book a couple of shows ago. So if you took the mic, to share today and would like to win this prize, go ahead and raise your hand. I think Paula might have come back. If you won with the last drawing, please do not. We would rather not have repeat winners or somebody that wins more than one prize. Let's spread the, the winners out some. Um, if you shared in the chat, you can also raise your hand for the, the drawing. OK, we have anyone else want to raise their hand before I put in the number? OK, we have eight. Eight are in the randomizer. The number is two. Barbara, you've won the book. Um, please type your email in chat. Again, the, the Emails in chat will be removed before the chat's posted. And also, please do not raise your hand for subsequent drawings. All right, I'm back. <laughs> uh, almost made it through the whole thing. Barbara, I'm excited. Um, if you wanted um, any kind of special autographing, let me know. Um, and I will make sure I do that before I send it out to you. I am going to actually need, well, you know, you're going to give us your email. You and I will connect, and I will get it sent out to you. So excited. All right, so moving on. Bucket list question number four. Okay, and now we're going to go into more of websites, apps, extensions, things that you'd like to explore this summer. And Carolyn, you are up first. Oh my goodness, I forgot to unraise my hand. <laughs> but anyway, I do have, uh, actually, I would like to do some more uh, exploration, as I said, of virtual reality. So I'm just going to uh, sit, maybe somebody else can uh, give me some suggestions for how to get started with virtual reality, because it sounds really awesome. Thank you. No problem. All right, Wes, the mic is yours. All right, well, I've, uh, I've decided to have uh, three themes for this next school year uh, with faculty and also presentations. And uh, the themes are be safe and uh, be connected and tell stories. And so for the first one, be safe, I am working more with a Google Chrome extension <coughs> for LastPass. Um, we're encouraging all of our teachers and staff to use a password manager 
and last pass is a free one that you can use individually. And uh, we're also requiring all of our staff to, uh, to go on to two-step verification for their Google accounts. We're a Google Apps for Education or G Suite school uh, by December. And so anyway, the um, LastPass extension is really nice with Chrome because whenever you log into a new site, it just pops up and says, oh, would you like to you know, save this in your vault? And so we've been doing one-on-one -on -one workshops with some uh, of our elementary teachers this summer, and I'm um, just looking forward to learning more about it. And, and also, we may end up using this for our IT team because you, you can pay for it um, at, a, at an enter enterprise level and then actually share passwords. And of course, we have just tons of passwords for different things that we have to keep track of, and we use Google Docs and things like that for it. So I just I think it's really a great thing to encourage everyone in our lives, whether they are education related or not, to use a password manager. And um, you know, LastPass is free, so it's a great one to recommend to people, and uh, seems to be a secure one that has not been hacked. So that's good. Thanks for sharing that with us, Wes. All right, Carl, you're going to be up. I just want everyone here to know that Carl is another uh, buddy from Louisiana, and he is a school board member. Good, good, good morning, everybody. And yeah, I, I'm I'm on the dark side now, okay? Uh, but uh, teachers love me because I'm their voice on the board. But at any rate, uh, imagine if you will, still stuck in the 20th century with this board. They, they shovel paper around and have little mail cubicles to send information. I've been trying to bring the board to the 21st century, and we just approved uh, the Google uh, 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 for Education, and we just approved a whole lot of Chromebooks that um, for our school district. And I'm sitting here listening to you guys. I'm thinking to myself, you know what? I, I should force the board to start using Google as well. And I've been emailing them quite a bit of you know, various different uh, uh, news articles and such that piqued my interest on Twitter or Facebook. So um, uh, what do you guys think? you think I should drag these uh, 20th century board members and make them start using Google uh, for education in our board meetings? Carl, I think so. I think if you start um, sending them things as Google Docs and you know do all your uh, shares through Google Slides, it's a slow process, but it will work. Uh, yeah, and then, uh, and, you know it's always a process. Uh, now, Paul knows me very well. I, I hate being in the middle of the pack. I like being in front of the pack. So, uh, but uh, you know it takes time. I understand. But, you know. I, I tease myself. I don't have much time left. <laughs> I need to get moving. So, at any rate, I, I appreciate you know, Paula and all the rest of our Louisiana team uh, and moving forward in Classroom 2.0. 2 uh, and, uh, and please keep it up. Uh, I, I may not be a, an active participant for everything, but I am definitely lurking in the background watching. So, uh, yes, I, I think we're gonna, I'm going to start doing that. We're going to share docs and Google for Education. For sure. I'm going to get the account set up for our board members and uh, and let them see what our teachers go through. I mean, I, some of these uh, board members haven't been in the classroom for uh, uh, any length of time. And they just don't know the pressures that we've had in, in the past uh, 10 years, amazingly, uh, uh, for, uh, for technology and the uh, the uh, expectations of standards and testing and so forth. So yes, uh, we um, yes we definitely learned by example. So uh, thank you for uh, having this today, Paula. Well, thank you, Carl, for being here and for taking the mic. All right, Tammy, it's your turn. Okay, thanks, Paula. I'm bringing an image up on the screen because I think that's going to help a lot with this one. So I want to share about an Adobe product called Character Animator. And it's brand new. It's still in beta. Um, sometimes the betas they'll even make available to people outside of the Creative Cloud. Not sure with this one because it integrates so tightly with some of the other, other software that they have. But a lot of schools, they've got Creative Cloud as part of the software that's on their computers. And even if teachers want to do it, it's just $29.99 for a teacher and you get all of the apps. So I want to encourage people not to feel like, oh, I can't do it because 
it's going to cost something. You get so much in that twenty nine ninety nine that you can you can really find it very useful. So now that everybody's probably got this image or very soon to get it, I can tell you a little bit more about what this what the software does. Um, do you create puppets? They've got plenty that come with the package, and there's a lot of artists that share theirs for free too. But what's really neat is that the student or the teacher that is creating some sort of a, a recorded type of e-learning or doing a live stream, what the, what the webcam will automatically do is it will automatically, you have to have a special webcam, um, but it automatically is going to take your webcam, it's going to track your mouth, your eyes, your head tilt, everything that you're doing, even full body motions will impact your puppet. And so this makes it easy for students and for teachers to be able to bring in animated characters into their recorded lessons, also live lessons, because you can take this and, and mix it with either the free and mix together different inputs. You need a green screen and all kinds of things to bring it all together. Or if you want to do something more sophisticated, you can do something called live stream and then broadcast out more fancy. But the uh, live stream does cost something, whereas OBS is free. So um, some of the other nice things about it is that as you talk, it's, it's taking what you're saying through the audio, and it's automatically making the mouth move. So the puppet will have built in the shape of the mouth for O, the shape of the mouth for you know, all the different mouth shapes. But the software automatically does the correct mouth shape for what you say. And um, you can, for things, for other animations inside of it, it, you can do, it can be touch screen enabled if you want it to be so that students, and it's multi-touch. Multi so you can see here two people, or two fingers touching, and you can animate what the hands are doing. So what's being broadcast is, is so it's all live time animation puppeting. It's really more puppeting than animation almost. So I felt I felt like this would be really interesting for kids and and teachers to be able to make really cool recorded lessons. And because it has a live stream capability, you can do live broadcast through YouTube. You could do um, Google Hangouts and bring your characters into Google Hangouts. So I just think it's going to be so much fun. Oh, and I was going to post a couple links. Um, tutorials, lots and lots of tutorials here. Um, OK Samurai, definitely, if you're going to do this, you'll want to subscribe to OK Samurai. Um, that, YouTube, that follows you in the YouTube channel as part of the Adobe team and really produces a ton of really cool uh, tutorials. And one tutorial in in particular, if you want to do live streaming through Google Hangouts or through YouTube or other broadcast things, for instance, if your school happens to have a live broadcast through the school, some schools have got that, that particular tutorial of OK Samurai tells you how you can set it up, technically. Thank you so much, Tammy. Looks like an awesome tool. All right, Peggy, you are up. Well, thank you. We are running out of time, so I'm going to make this really fast, but I wanted to share with you um, a new tool that I've learned about but haven't actually personally used yet, and it's called GooseChase.com. And what it is is a scavenger hunt uh, organizer that you can use in classrooms, in clubs, with faculty meetings, at conferences, and it's just a really great way to get people engaged and act actively involved in things. And I'm going to do a real quick sharing just so you get an idea of um, what uh, what the site looks like, and uh, it's called Scavenger Hunts for the Masses, and they create missions, and the missions have them going out and taking photos, doing videos, taking GPS locations in response to these missions, and they use them for content, and they use them for um, 
oh, like one of the examples I saw was bitty, um, classroom bulletin boards. And you can participate worldwide in this. So anyone can join in your mission if they're invited. And that then they can contribute. It is free unless you want the really expensive versions, but you don't need them. You can have five teams of people for free. And if you put five or six people on a team, you can see the numbers could really grow. So that's kind of it in a nutshell. The, the, there are some great tutorials in the Live Binder that you can check out later. But it sounds like a really fun way to do a scavenger hunt. We lost Paula again, so it looks like, Sherry, you're up next. Go right ahead. All right. I've been clicking all those links, even though I know that they're going to be in the live binder. So like Peggy's screen just showed, all those tabs. So I have an extension called One Tab, and I just click it, and it puts them all onto a little web page for me to refer to later. I can rearrange them, star them, name the name the group. So and I can export it as a web page. So it's pretty awesome. So if you have a lot of tabs open, you can click one tab and gather them all together. So that's what I wanted to share. All right, I'm back again. <laughs> Keep getting bumped. All right. So thank you everyone. Um Peggy, I know we're a little past our hour, and we do have more questions and, of course, more um, uh, uh, raffles to do. Um, what, how should we handle this? Well, how about if there's anybody who has something that they put on the, on the signing sheet that they wanted to share, raise your hand now. Or if there's anybody else who would like to share something, the last questions had to do with, um, we already did that. Um, what fun places will you plan to visit this summer? And also, so what hobbies will you pursue, pursue during the summer? So if you'd like to comment on any of those, raise your hand right now, and then we'll close out with our final prizes. And we have four more prizes, I think. OK, uh, I'm just jumping right in since uh, my hand was raised. Uh, and, uh, I, I'm really excited about this because I'm leaving in, on September 27th to go to the UK to do my what my wife is fondly calling my magical mystery tour while I'm 64. Uh, I am 64 this year, and I'm a big Beatles fan, so we're going to do a Beatles tour. Uh, we're going to land, uh, leave on September 27th, land in Manchester, and take a boat uh, bus to Liverpool. We're going to spend three days in Liverpool staying at the Hard Day's Night Hotel, looking at all the different places of the Beatles, uh, their, where they started, and where their music, the Cavern Club, and so forth. And then we're going to take a magical mystery tour from uh, Liverpool to London. We're going to go to um, uh, Oxford for, uh, for a, a beautiful luncheon. And then we're going to go to uh, London, and we're going to spend four days in London uh, crossing Happy Road and uh, going to the studios and their homes and such. And then uh, I, I've extended that vacation an additional four days uh, to take in the other London sites that we're going to miss while we're doing the Beatle thing. So uh, I am so certainly looking forward to this. Uh, yes, uh, I, and you, that's, that's it. My wife just laughed when I told her about this. Uh, yeah, when I'm 64, here I am doing my Beatle tour. So I'm certainly looking forward to that. And I hope to share that through um, uh, through uh, my uh, social media. So if you're following me, you'll, you'll see a lot of that uh, on, on that as well. So uh, I'll turn the mic over to Wiley. Wow. 
I only push the talk button right below um, in the audio video window. Can you hear me? Now yeah, we can. Okay, great. I'm sorry. This is my first time using it. In addition, I'm calling in from my iPhone using the app. So um, I am, I'll, I'll talk about just Tab Cloud real quickly. I love one tab, and that's actually the one that I use. I know a couple of people that said that they didn't, they haven't heard of uh, Tab Cloud, um, and it's it's very similar to One Tab. It's a it's to save your URLs, but it's just a little bit more colorful. Some people prefer it. I I've seen that you more of the uh, more creative, artsy type people. Uh, kind of like the tab cloud because of the colors and everything, how it organizes your tabs. But uh, I'm a little more simple because I like the uh, one tab. But I am excited about uh, going to San Antonio to ISTE this summer. It is my first time going to ISTE. And so um, that's, that's the main thing that I'm excited about uh, for this summer. And then I'm also um, – Learning and trying to use more of um, Flipgrid. Um, I don't know if anyone has ever heard of or has used Flipgrid, but it's like a a video response uh, platform that allows you to um, allow students to give video feedback. Um, in a in a grid type manner, and they can actually respond and things of that nature. Imagine imagine Blackboard, how they can comment on a post or in a forum, but in a video style, and they can actually reply to each other's videos and comments with another video. So it's uh it's pretty cool. I'll see if I have an example that I can drop into the chat. All right, I'm feeling like a proud mama. I just had an awesome moment. Thank you, Wiley, for taking the mic. Wiley is another member of my PLN from right here in Louisiana. All right, our last couple of minutes. Um, anyone else want to take uh, the mic, and then we will do our raffling. And you can share anything. Just take the mic and say hi. If that's all you feel like doing. All right, Peggy, it looks like it might be time for us to go ahead and wrap this up. Don't see any hands raised. Don't think anybody else wants to take it. Why are the mic still on? All right, so we're up to raffle three, which is a another Amazon gift card for $25. Uh, Peggy, are we allowing anyone that's participated in chat or taking the mic to raise their hand? Absolutely, let's do that. Awesome. So anyone Actually, who's anyone, anyone who's here, anyone who took time out on a Saturday to join us for this sharing should be eligible. So raise your hand unless you've already won a prize and you are eligible for all of the remaining drawings. Okay, we have a few people that still have not raised their hand that are not winners yet. Come on, Doug. There you go. Come on. Come on, people, get those hands up in the air. <laughs> All right. Um, da -da 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 -da. Wiley's up. Okay. Um, still have a few people lingering. No, no, no. Okay. There we go. One more. Awesome. Our gr our friend from Greece. Come on, raise your hand. <laughs> Can't get him to take the mic or raise his hand. Okay. Um, it looks like our number is nine. And the result is three. Carolyn. Karen uh, Carolyn. Right. Carolyn Stanley, congratulations. Don't forget to enter your email in the chat, which will be removed before we post everything. Awesome. So moving on to prize four, another $25 gift card. 
Raise your hand if you're in the room. All right, Lori, it looks like our number this time is eight. Up at the top, it's Susie. Well, she was eight. It'll be Susie, though. All right, so Su Susie's the winner of that one. All right, congratulations. I hadn't clicked the randomizer yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, hold on. Wait. <laughs> wait. I just, okay, oh, eight was how many people there were in total. Right. That's what it was. Eight was the number of people. I got the random number. It was two. All right, two. Uh, so Wiley. Wiley. Yay, Wiley. So Wiley, we need your email address in chat, and it will then be taken out after or before the chat's posted. All right, and for our fifth drawing, we have another $25 Amazon gift card. Most of these were donated by the team that works for Classroom 2.0 Live each week. So we appreciate them, and we thank them wholeheartedly for their support. Okay, anyone else want to get in on this drawing? It looks like our magic number this time is six, Lori. This is out of seven. I'm number seven. Four is Carl. Hey, my Louisiana buddies. Woohoo! <laughs> It is not fixed, I promise you. <laughs> and our last, I believe, drawing is for another Amazon gift card. Carl, put your hand down. You already won. <laughs> All right, let's see. Hold on a second. We have... We can, um, what we could do, if Carl does it... Okay, Carl got it. Am I? Okay. All right, so anyone else in the room who participated in any fashion who is here with us and who is not a previous prize winner, please raise your hand. <clears throat> okay, I think that is, Carolyn, you're not going to put your hand up? Or you already won, I don't remember. All right, so is our total number five? Is that it this time? Yep, five is the total. I'm getting the random number. It is five. Sherry. Sherry, yay. Congratulations. Well, we have come to the end of this. Peggy, I'll turn it over so you can wrap us up. That was so much fun. Thank you all for joining us and for sharing. And I know that we're going to have some people checking in on the recording later to see what they missed. This was wonderful. I want to remind you, this was our last show before summer break. And we won't be having another show from now until August 5th. Many people will be at the ISTE conference or at not at ISTE, and so there will be tons of opportunities for professional development over the summer, and then we hope you'll all come back on August 5th, where we're going to have Holly Clark and Tanya Avrith sharing some awesome Google tools for making student thinking visible from their new book, which is just about to come out. Not out yet, Google Infused Classroom. So I hope you'll come and join us for that. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest. He's gathered all his PD resources in one place, including host your own webinar, where you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate session. And as long as it's open to the public, it is free. You can nominate a featured teacher at this link. Uh, you can nominate yourself as a featured teacher. We have one usually each month. 
It's also the location for the form is also in the live finder. The video collection for recordings are on uh, iTunes U. And as you exit the session, the survey link should open. You can also take the link from the chat or within the live binder. The live binder also has the archives and resources link as well, as well as all the other relevant links. As you exit, you can request a professional development certificate. And thanks to Patty Rothing, you get these as well as your name is printed on the certificates themselves. Please have this sent to a personal email address. Schools tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks to our special guests, Paula Noggle, and everybody in the session. To Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution. To Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming. <laughs>